Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Wait, just wait. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show 503. Another Tuesday with you once again, and this is going to be a special one. Uh, of course, uh, please check everything out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, where you can subscribe to this show and so many other things. We're talking about pro wrestling, we're talking about WWE with Lucha Underground, TNA, all kinds of stuff all across the network and even some indie wrestling as well and uh please uh drop a line to 412-206-WMS0 good times at wrestling mayhem show dot com good times good times <laughs> and uh please uh drop us a line uh, uh and uh, let us know what you, your thoughts on the show anything else like that and uh please su- support us on the patreon patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show uh including our friends the uh, uh, uh matthew and jennifer carlin's uh foundation of podcast betterment uh ed burke antonio garza um, who is cashing in his uh patreon in the bank tonight uh, as well as uh, uh oh oh Bo Diggity! Woo! Who pays us a dollar an episode, so I say his name on every show that way for him. Thank you so much to the guys supporting the show in that way. You can to patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. You don't have to give us money, but we very much appreciate it. If not, please share, please uh, 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 like us on and rate us and, and comment on uh, on iTunes or wherever, whatever podcatcher you happen to be using, or just just tell a friend to to, to share in the mayhem. We're flipping around because we got. I, I feel like the introductions are going to take us a, a while here, <laughs> for uh, considering something we have to do. But first of all, with us from uh, we're going coast to coast, and we're we're going to fill every time zone. I discovered tonight with our guests with this lineup tonight. First of all, joining us from Poughkeepsie, New York. He's uh, the guy, he's the one of two people tonight that have a future endeavor letter from the WWE. He is Mad Mike. Hi, Sorg. How are you tonight? Oh, okay. Give me a great show. Okay, and I, I hope you connect with our Poughkeepsie friends from last week when, with, when another wrestling podcast joined us. Um, we, we will see. I don't know what my weekend is going to hold yet, but uh, we'll find out. I may be snowed in. I don't know. <laughs> I heard I might be too, and I have two wrestling shows to produce, so that's yeah, going to be fun. Uh, and also with us from uh, El Paso, Texas, if I'm not mistaken, it is uh, our Patreon in the bank. It is Antonio Garza of the WrestlingRevolution.com joining us once again, and make sure we get pronunciations right tonight. Exactly, Sorga. I am here to represent the Mountain Time people, my Spanish speaking essays, uh, and roll my R's. <laughs> roll them roll them and also with us uh here in the greater pittsburgh area he is our friend in the mainstream media and he's the cover uh, coveter of the Bay- mayhem mania big board that's already causing controversy apparently but what really okay big board yes big screen with a little little logo I'm going to use this. I can't. We'll figure it out later. Is that your Telestrator? We're, we're, we're in beta. We're in beta right now on this thing. We're in beta. So. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> okay. It'll work. <laughs> I swear it'll work. Now, and, and of course, our guest of honor from the West Coast, from the left. No. Yes, left coast. Hold, hold up my fingers. Make sure I got this right. Krista Joseph, executive producer on the Lucha Underground, joins us once again. Of course, he joined us on the Indie Mayhem show a few episodes back. Thanks for coming back on the main show, sir. Oh, yeah. I'm so happy to be back. That's right, baby. Callie. <laughs> um, so we'll get into Lucha Underground. I, I understand it might be a little bit coming up here with you guys, but I think we got bigger things we need to take care of. You stated you want a name by the time you got back here. We got Mad Mike. Everybody's got their names. Um, um, so so uh, there was a lot of discussion on the Slack today. We have some options for you. And I, I, don't, I don't know how we want to do this entirely, but I think everybody kind of has their favorite from what we talked about today. Um, um, so uh, I'm, I'm nervous. You're nervous. <laughs> I think you should be. <laughs> yeah. We are too. <laughs> it's um, a big moment. So, so, so we have some options for you. Mike, let's go with you first. I know. I think you were participating in there. What were some of the names that we were coming with, up with on the Slack? Um, well, 
my personal favorite was we, we were trying like we figured your name should be in Spanish. Okay. <laughs> and I was thinking El Lucha Lapis. Kind of like kind of like the wrestling pencil, the wrestling booker, you know, stuff like that. Like yeah. I, I feel like okay. I kind of like that. That's my I like favorite. That. I, I, feel, I feel that, man. That's cool. That's cool. I should have I should have made myself a lucha mask today with that. That's good. That's good. What else do we got? All right, uh, Garza, Garza. Well, uh, since I mean, Dario Cueto is El Jefe, but you are Dario's boss. So, <laughs> in a tribute, in a tribute to Los Tigres del Norte, I say El Jefe de Jefes. Ooh, oh, wow, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> uh, Matt, I, were you part of the conversation as well? I can't recall. Yeah, I was part of the conversation. Yeah, I think like yeah, we all love. Uh, Dario Cueto. I think we all wish that we were like related to Dario. I think we all wish we were maybe not his brother, but maybe like his son. So I thought like El Elijo del Cueto might Ooh. be something that you'd be interested in. Oh, wow, wow. So we still got a little Spanish. We still got a little lucha, or we can go with Alberto del Joseph. Oh, Ooh. that's pretty good too. I like that. That's good. Wow, I like that. Um, I'm I'm partial to one of the suggestions from from the Slack. Uh, El Chris. El Chris. Oh, <laughs> simple but effective. <laughs> yes, it's it's to the point and and not confusing. <laughs> so, and I can pronounce it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what what do you what do you think? What, what do you what, what should what what should be your mayhem name then? Um, I think I, I think I'm going to go with the son of Dario Cueto. I like that. I like yes. that. That's, a good, that's a good name. I think that's the, the winner for me. The son of Dario. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Matt. That's good well, stuff. Well, well, well done. That, yeah, that's why he's made <laughs> Matt. Awesome. Right there. Uh, so, Grab so my mainstream bro. So I don't yeah. want if people want it, we could really kind of dove in with you and, and ask you all the tough questions last time, Chris. And I'm sure I'm sure Matt's going to try to try to slip one by you again this time. Too. Sure, I know. <laughs> I, I don't think I answered anything last time. Right? No, 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 nothing at all. <laughs> nothing at all. Um, and, I think uh, most of your answers were, "Oh, I wish I could tell you," but, right, but uh, I can't. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you you were as slippery as Angelico trying to get away from the crew. I mean. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but uh, you know we do want to touch base. We're we're just over, I believe, a week away from uh, Lucha Underground season two as of this recording, uh, yep. uh, or actually probably even less so uh, uh, as we as we cross the uh, uh, time zones for some of us here. Uh, but uh, uh, I, you know what you know you you're obviously well into you have uh, episodes in the can, probably a, a good number of them at this point. Um, yeah. what you know, we've seen the previews, we got Matt Stryker catching us up on, on, on Lucha Underground, uh, videos yeah. popping around Facebook and everything. Um, how are you feeling? How, how are things going? Just generally, how are things going with the production? How's it feel to be back at it full on? Um, cause I think we were just, you were just a day in on production when we talked to you last. Yeah. Uh, it's the production has been crazy. Uh, the schedule has been crazy. Um, Getting everything done has been crazy, and this weekend is our last weekend of tapings for season two. So, uh, or not this weekend, the, the 31st, 30th, then 31st. So, um, we are pretty excited uh, to be done, but at the same time, uh, you know, it's it's a little bit of, of a bittersweet feeling, but uh, it'll be nice to have a little bit of a break, and who knows, uh, season three might be rolling shortly thereafter. We, mm. we, we don't know yet, but... Uh, that will be a good thing too. So, um, not a, a shortage of, of work to do on Lucha Underground. I will tell you, there is definitely some awesome wrestling uh, this season for sure. Um, and uh, I think I think the storylines are pretty good. I mean, if I had to say it myself, I hate. I, gosh, I hate to put, put myself in this situation. It's always nerve wracking, like a second season. Like, is it ever going to live up to? The hyper people are like, well, it's not as good as the first one, you know. Like, uh, it's kind of tough to 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 do the sequel, but I think we tried our best, and I think we got we we uh, we got pretty good at what we did last year, and and we we roll right into it, and hopefully don't don't have too many missteps. Mm-hmm. You know, it, you know, the scary part is, um, I, I always hear as far as like at least drama shows, and which I, I feel like you guys are very much kind of in league with that, with the way you guys do your show. Um, um, things don't really start hitting their stride until season three. I hear, uh, which if, if this isn't your stride, oh my God, 
<laughs> yeah. So we're, we're hoping that this one that this one's good. We, I, you've seen the trailer, so I'm sure you guys have seen. There's some there's some strange stuff going on, but uh, that's what we try to do. We try to push the envelope a little bit and do stuff that uh, that other places won't. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I know, I know. Gotta throw it against the wall and see if it sticks. You know, mm-hmm. you never know. And I know. Uh, well, it was speaking of that trailer. I think it was the first season two trailer that popped up. Uh, Matt Carlin's here did a step by step Force Awakens style <laughs> breakdown of that said trailer and asked I all the. It. <laughs> you watched. <laughs> I watched that. Yeah, <laughs> he broke it down. He tore it apart. And, and and Matt, I don't know if you want to poke at that a little bit, get some clarifications on anything that you possibly can at this point. Let me, let me go check my old notes. What? what <laughs> let me go check and see what unanswered questions I had left here okay. that uh, I had to uh, had to ask Chris that uh, I might have neglected to mention whenever we were uh, watching. <laughs> Chris, let me ask you one thing real, real quick because this keeps <laughs> popping into my head. Okay. Um, more or less backstage stuff in season two as compared to season one. Yes or no? Um, there'll probably be a little bit more in the first half, and then it'll, uh, you know, because we're trying to tell a bit more stuff about background of characters and things like that. So you'll see a little bit more in the first half of the season, and then it'll probably get a little bit closer to normal Lucha Underground through the, the last half. But there is some uh, there is some backstage stuff. Some stuff doesn't even take place in the temple. So there's lots of stuff this season that doesn't take place uh, in Boyle Heights. That's, what, that, 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 that's actually a surprise because well, really the majority of everything in season one happened like within the confines of the building, right? Correct. So, I mean, I like like it's. <laughs> I, I abuse this in some other cases. This, this feels like the, the the follow that bird, where like we actually get to see a uh, big bird outside of Sesame Street. I know that is the weirdest con, you know, with Lucha Underground. I could probably take, but it, it is is it, how exciting was that to get them kind of out of that those confines? Uh, that, that was fun. It was it it allowed us a little bit of creative freedom and to do some kind of neat things that we hadn't done before and. Uh, and, and that 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 made it uh, a lot of fun and and uh, even more challenging. Like sometimes you don't want to stay in that that temple all day. It smells like cat pee and, and <laughs> violence. Uh, so yeah, uh, it, it was nice to get out and get some fresh air. Violence with cats. Um, yeah, you know that kind we, of thing. There's lots of cats that live in the temple. Mm-hmm. Tons of them. It's crazy. Well, I mean, yeah, you got Bengala. You got- yes, <laughs> Bengala. <laughs> Mittens. The mighty Bengala. The mighty Bengala. <laughs> I always forget. I apologize, Matt. That's awesome. Yes, from uh, the jungle. Uh, Garza, uh, we have anything you want to you want to poke at Chris here about season two? <laughs> uh, uh, no, uh, he was saying that there's always a chance that season two is uh, like the the dangerous one. But uh, at least for myself, uh, I already saw the the trailer for the like the second trailer that came out, and I saw that one second of Pentagon Jr. and Mil Martis together in the ring and I'm already pre-ordering the season two DVD box set. A oh, special right. edition. Yeah, because like I'm already sold just just knowing that those two will clash. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They will. Uh, you know, that's an interesting <laughs> thing. So we talk about um I, I don't know if we talked about this when we talked when, when we had you on Indie Mayhem show. Um but there's something that we always compare like or I do at least, like, you know, Impact Wrestling versus WWE or anybody else versus WWE. It depends on, like, no matter, like, let's take Sting, for instance. Sting's been doing all this stuff with TNA for how many years, but nothing feels important until he pops up on WWE, right? And the way they present things. And and it feels like, you know, like that reaction Garza gives you. Like, you, you've made things important in an interesting way where a lot of smaller wrestling groups, and you are, like, it's it's a smaller operation in in, in uh, um, can I say scale? Does that make sense? Obviously, production. significantly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, what you know? Obviously, you know. There's the the narrative that we we talked about before that you guys do differently. Um, you know, it, it, you know, what is that intangible thing that kind of gives it more atmosphere and weight? You know, like a WWE seems to be really good at. You know, it's funny. I was talking to Johnny Mundo today about it, and 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 <laughs> you know, <laughs> part of it is like. We don't 
give up on storylines necessarily. Like we, we follow through and mm-hmm. we do it where in the WWE, you could introduce a character and he's that way for the first five weeks or until like Vince changes his mind or somebody else has something to say. And the storyline just always being changed and tweaked and modified rather than, okay, this is our plan. Let's try to stay as close to the course as possible and, and make the payoff work, create the arc of the story and then, pay it off so it's not kind of like fly by night stuff and i think that that kind of has helped the audience be like oh okay now i start to care i care about these characters um you know i think we also told you know every character has a little bit something special about them so you can find multiple characters that you can get behind or like um I think that helps too uh, to have a roster where not every week you you know the main event could be your favorite guy or it could be somebody that you don't like that week. You know it's 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 a nice it's nice to be able to move the pieces around and and use people in at, at any point in the show. Mm-hmm. You know, guys, I think uh, I think Chris is hinting that we'll get to see uh, the slam song of El Mariachi Loco on season two, guys. So <laughs> it's about time. I, uh, Chris, to the ring. I, I just wanted Bobby's asking a question in the chat room. Oh, uh, all right. Is anyone else no, going to die? It, it, will there be more murder in season two? Basically, is what he's asking. And that goes back to one of the unanswered questions from the first trailer where we saw him. I, I'm going to assume it's kill shot, but he's in camouflage and he appears to be judo tossing and shooting everyone. So uh, yeah, so then yes, you will see more people die in. <laughs> uh, too. You know, <laughs> will, will anyone is anyone going to find what's left of Bale in season two? Um, the, there, Bale will be brought up in season two. He, he will. He oh, will be brought up. Oh, oh, please, please be a ghost. Please be a ghost. Please. Be a ghost. <laughs> Please, please, I'm praying to the Lucha Gods. No spoilers, Mike. I'm not – I, I do not want – friends don't let friends spoil Lucha Underground. That's why, that's why it's a right there. Uh, wow. I, I, I do have a question though. Um, his, his brother Dale shows up looking for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Does Dale have an evil, an evil mustache? He's missing a tooth too. <laughs> He's got, a luch- he's got a luchador mask with a mustache on it. Like, have you seen Bale? He's an accountant. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Oh my God. He, he never showed up for dinner after one night at the temple. And we've been really worried about him. <laughs> There's signs all over the place. Have you seen my brother? <laughs> um, I did have a question, though. When you're um, do- filming the matches and all that stuff, Yep. Have you do you film like the interstitials around the same time or like all the backstage stuff or the or is um, that done year, earlier? I mean, like this year we did a lot of stuff in advance for for to save money and stuff like that and mm-hmm. and get a lot of it. Like I we shot the a big scene for the finale uh, for Ultima Lucha. We shot that, uh, gosh, like at the very beginning. So, um, you know you got to cr- cross your fingers and hope that things don't change too much or somebody doesn't get horribly injured or things like that, because that can have an effect on it. But we rolled the dice and, and did some things in advance. Um, yeah, those things aren't shot the days of the matches. We just, we, the scripts are written. Uh, all those pieces are there. And then we kind of follow along with it. I mean, sometimes we shoot things completely out of order. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the people who are there watching the show have no idea really. So, okay. Yeah. I was just curious, like how much, like the guys knew about the rim ring story when they're in there. Like some at, do. One, at one at one point they are, you know. Some do, but like even uh, I have I tell you like lots of times the talent come to me and they're like ah they kind of confused as to what's going on because they don't see everybody else's parts and what everybody else is doing and how the whole puzzle fits together. So it's like I have the puzzle in my head and I know how it all comes together. So um, they don't get to see that. So sometimes it's it's fun to do it mm-hmm. that way too uh, and. Um, but other times, sometimes they're like, Hey, so what the heck is happening to this character? So, uh, you know, you try to give them a little bit of context as, as to what's going on. But right. in, in some, in some cases, like I don't like to tell, especially when they're acting the parts to tell them everything because sometimes they wouldn't really know. Right. Right. Yeah, Cause I, I've heard that done on like a lot of like serialized TV and stuff like that, where they don't know what's happening to their character until they get the pages for that day. That's mm-hmm. pretty much what we do. So. Okay. 
Okay. I mean, I, obviously, sometimes I'll, I'll talk to people about about a program and and like you know how we're gonna what we're gonna do with them for the season, whether it's you know Johnny or 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 uh, or other uh, guys on the show. So yeah. I was thinking of Johnny. I just we just we just went to Sports Center. We just did Sports Center with uh, Lucha Underground today, so that was uh, I, he was there with. Me. Yeah, and, and Matt, uh, to answer your question, I got the pictures up. If you if you want to touch base on that, yeah, I want to ask you about this because we did see um, uh, Melissa Santos, and I think she was sending out some uh, pictures of her with uh, Stan Barrett from Sports yeah. Center. You can see Johnny Moon in the background. What the heck is going on? Are they going to get like a little segment? What's going? Is it just like, yeah. hey, how you doing? Are we, get, are we getting a Trenta by Trenta? We're gonna be doing a. We're doing a, a. Either I think it's either on. Uh, I don't know when this comes out, but it'll be on ne- next Monday or Tuesday. They're gonna uh, Sports Center will be like Lucha Underground Sports Center, the late one oh, from wow. Los Angeles. That's awesome. That's amazing. So, yeah, like, it, it, was, you, it was really cool. Uh, do you sense like the hype machine and is a little bit more behind you this time? Yeah, I think I think it's like. Uh, the, the word about the show is leaking out there and people are finding out about it. And um, I think it'll become more available in not only the United States, but other places shortly. And, uh, you know, might become more available for, for everybody in this country too. Good. So, um, you know, hopefully it keeps the momentum keeps building, but you can, you can get a sense that even in LA, like, people know about it and people like wonder how do they get a secret ticket to come into the Lucha <laughs> Underground Temple. Uh, so you know that if there's a vibe like that, I don't know, for some reason it just, it feels cool and feels like, you know, kind of a, a cool thing to do right now. So that's a good thing. A good problem to have, I think. It's nice and exclusive. And, and I want to also, I want to mention, cause I, I was, I'm a core cutter. So, and I, I vowed I'm going to keep up with Lucha Underground. I was kind of like, watch these guys. And like I said, kind of vicariously, uh, uh, got through the excitement with them and, 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 and caught up a little bit myself. Um, but uh, for the cord cutters even, uh, or if it's not in your area, Sling TV actually carries El Rey Network, I think in the basic package right now. Um, so, I mean, it's 20 bucks a month to do something like that, but that's pretty accessible everywhere, at least in the United States. So if anybody looking for uh, good, legit options to catch the show, um, that's that's definitely one to look into. So. Um, and just one yeah. more question to piggyback on just the availability. Sure. And I know we ask you this like every single time, but like Netflix, DVD, or either of those things in the works? DVD especially. Uh, well, there's lots of things in the works. And as far as like networks and stuff like that, I can't really get into it. But I do think that it will become available for purchase at some point. Good, so, yes. good, good. Awesome. <laughs> um, I, I I forgive myself for being a mean, but shut up and take my money. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will literally just throw dollars at you for me to own Lucha Underground season one. So. I'll throw pesos. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah, hopefully there'll be like more uh, more more other things, merchandise. Like we got a got a Puma mask. Oh. Now. Puma mask coming. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. And yeah, we got it all. That's good. I mean, it was it was hard to find merch last year. It was it was. Yeah, hopefully they're yeah, starting to get to, to get the ball rolling a little bit more. I'm still pushing for more character specific stuff, but mm-hmm. yeah, can't have everything. I, I need a Marty Dumont <laughs> shirt in my life. I, I know everybody needs a yellow Aztec Pride shirt. Come on, <laughs> I mean that's the one I've been pushing the most for. I'm like, I think a lot of people would buy that. But I feel like action figures would be good too, and you can have like. Oh. You know, Dario's truck and the trailer and everything, a little playset thing going on. Yep, your own jail right cell. There, yeah. yeah. All, all sorts of different stuff. It's all ready to go. The jail cell playset with, 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 with dead bail. <laughs> yeah, with like a little, little jar of blood that you put in there. Like, you know. Or my little Matanza, like just a yeah. giant. <laughs> I love that. You can dress him, all sorts of stuff. <laughs> I got to get the girls something, you know. <laughs> oh, geez. Um, I, I can't believe we've gone this far. We haven't mentioned uh, Rey Mysterio's name one time. Are you are you ready to tell us anything about Rey Mysterio? Yeah, Ray, he's Ray, up to? Rey Mysterio is in Lucha Underground, and uh, he's up to uh, – tying into the storyline and and uh <laughs> there was a giant question mark that was put on a billboard at the end of last year and uh i would think uh ray mysterio has often used a question mark as a symbol of for himself so, so um, 
so we we speculated at the end of the first season that that may have been like a bad signal for Mysterio. Is that basically what we're seeing a little bit? Yeah, I, yeah, it's kind of, yeah, I mean, that's the way I envisioned it. And at the same time, it was like a question mark of like, hey, we don't know if this show's going to get picked up or not, so let's just put it up there too. <laughs> that's double meaning. <laughs> well, at least we finally answered the question of who's that jumping out the sky. So, yes. <laughs> so what has been your favorite part that you've shot of season two so far that you can even hint at? Oh gosh, uh, my favorite part of season two that I've shot. Um, I mean, I guess uh, there's a few. I mean, the uh, you know kill shot uh, thing was pretty fun. Um, God, uh, there is uh, there's a backstory scene with Dario Cueto that's emotional and awesome and. Uh, uh, I will say, then uh, going into the to Marty's house, Marty the Most house is oh, no. uh, pretty pretty cool. That's one of my favorites. Are there just <laughs> light bulbs? <laughs> are there light bulbs that are just swinging back and forth? <laughs> uh, he he lives in a nice house, so uh, you'll, you'll see. he lives in the suburbs, uh, doesn't he? He just he just. <laughs> He dresses nice and say you'll you'll get a kick out of it. Oh, I'm so excited for this. Yeah, Mar- yeah Marty the Moss stepped up his game this year. Dude. <laughs> That's amazing. He's a total psychopath. <laughs> um, who else um who else <laughs> is Is it next Wednesday already? Can we just fast forward? <laughs> is there is there an early preview somewhere along the line we can pick up or <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the first five, the first, uh, the first five shows so far. So they're, and I like, I really like them all. I really think they're good. So hopefully you guys do too. That's great. Um, well, how many episodes are we getting in season two? Uh, twenty-seven hours, twenty-six episodes. Oh, oh wow. Awesome. Okay. And, and, and so and, Ultima Lucha is it going to be a two-hour? block this time yeah you know uh, yeah uh, yeah you know what well, I'm on, i'll just give an exclusive here ultimate lucha will be four total hours three total episodes wow yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh so yeah that it's it's cool Oh wow, and, and 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 most of these are in the can at this point too. That's incredible. Yeah, we've all we have left is basically Ultima Lucha, and we're, we shoot that in two weekends. Wow, oh, God. We're what is there. it? And, and, we're and there already from the first season, and, and again, you you know you're sitting on incredible matches, uh, and all that kind of thing. What is it like to like kind of have to sit on knowing this is a great match nobody's going to see for? what have we at like 20 weeks from now or something like that yeah it's crazy it's like uh, even when we shot i'm like god i'm not going to probably get to see this match again until for a few months It'll yeah just and then it's kind of cool for me too because to go back once once the editor starts sending me cuts and give notes at, to like to like look and, and watch those matches again and like oh my god i forgot how crazy that was or i forgot how how, how much i enjoyed that or you know oh i wish we didn't I wish we could fix that, <laughs> um, but uh, it's yeah, it's 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 a little bit crazy to do that, and especially this time. At least last time when we did it, we had a we had uh, a window where like people would watch the show, and then we could get a little bit of feedback from the audience, and then if we needed to make any changes, we could. This time, I mean, the first episode will air, and then we'll shoot the finale. So wow. <laughs> that's really all we're gonna get is if the first episode. <laughs> if, if everybody starts. Uh, Starts throwing out their televisions and, and you know, <laughs> however else they're stealing it. There's yeah, no everybody movement. stops stealing Lucha Underground. No, nope. you know we're in big trouble. Yeah, yeah. Now, no, now no, that you no, mentioned no. that, uh, has there ever been talk about releasing some of the director's cut version of some of the season one matches? Because I understand that, for instance, Pentagon Jr. versus Vampiro was like a 30 minute. Destruction yeah, I, I, think, I think it was 26 minutes, and I I was very angry that night because that wasn't supposed to happen. But in a way, it <laughs> helped tell the story. But, um, you know, when you're in charge of producing the show and you're counting on somebody to hit their time and they go well, that far over, it's uh, it can be frustrating. But, um, yeah, I don't know. You know, the thing is, is like to do that, that's, it costs money to have somebody edit that, and editors are not cheap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, it's a good job to have out here. Um, 
So I, I don't know. Maybe eventually, but I mean, at this point, uh, you know, not. I wouldn't count on anything within the next six months like that to happen. Um. So I, for um, season one, we basically had the whole Black Lotus story that never even crossed over into the ring. Mm-hmm. Are we gonna have anything like that again, where it's all just backstage stuff, like it's like it's something that may be uh, tying in for a possible season three or just like something that's going on backstage or is everyone that we see in the backstage segments eventually going to be in the ring? Uh, No, they're not everybody who you see in the backstage segments are going to be in the ring. We even have characters that aren't wrestlers on this season. So um, it's uh, that, uh, yeah, there will be stories that take place outside and that, that do not end up in the ring this season i mean some some things i will say like that we're trying to plant seeds for like season four or season five and we're just trying to plant them now so i mean we'll see we'll see what happens all righty <laughs> but yes there there are yeah there are other characters that are non-wrestlers in season two besides dario cueto <clears throat> excellent <laughs> I'm trying to think about what season four and season five are going to look like now. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to think about it too. So oh, good. We should, yeah. <laughs> Everyone's guys, going to be a zombie. If you Everyone. guys have any suggestions, please. Yeah. Everyone will be dead by that. Well, point. let's see. Let's and, see. There's, uh, there's, there's the, the wacky races idea. There's a, uh, uh, we could do Lucha underground in space. <laughs> Um, oh, Lucha Underground in space. I think if you just kind of like follow like a Power Rangers kind of template, you could be like, you know, you know Lucha Underground in space, Lucha Underground with dinosaurs, Lucha Underground with, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I'd be okay with like Lucha Underground Mexican Civil War. And, and then you bring back oh. like the five, oh. like the five, like the, the Lucha families, like the Cuetos and you got um, um, the Dasekas, the, the Demon Juniors. Apparently, Rey Mysterio. I mean, some some <laughs> some of some of which underground doesn't necessarily even take place in 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 this time. So, oh no, uh, you know, you'll you'll see. Well, wait, 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 wait. Now, now I'm imagining. <laughs> can, can I can I spitball here? <laughs> Now, now you got me going. If we want to splice Doctor Who and Lucha Underground. I'm totally cool. Well, with there's it. that. There's that. If but there's like a Lucha Tardis. Ooh. Yes. I mean, I try to. I try to say to everybody like Lucha Underground. We try to just make it a mix of everything that we, you know, like crime, sci-fi, fantasy, anything we can. Just throw so, it all in so there. you if want Aero the tra- star has a Tardis. I wouldn't be surprised. You want time travel, but 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 how about this? Like I'm guess I'm feeling I'm feeling uh, uh, flashback sequences. And we're in the temple, but it's old timey, whatever that means for Mexican old timey. Like I know for everything else, it's like, you know, uh, handlebar mustaches and stuff. Uh, so this could be really educational, um, you know, because we have like the old we have the old time it's handlebar mustaches on Lucha Mass. Sorry. Right. And we have like the old time wrestling up here in Ohio that I know, you know, Matt Cross is a part of and Gregory Irons and a lot of those guys. And, and it's very kind of like they, they do the video in black and white and everything. And I'm just kind of wrapping my head around what like. A flashback, old time wrestling in the <laughs> temple may look like at this point. <laughs> yeah, it could could look crazy. So, I mean, uh, you'll you'll see, you'll see what happens. I, mean, I can't give away anymore. I mean, yeah, 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 like we then, know, we know. then you have but to dress the. Up. So then I don't have... want to spoil it for everybody because it, it's 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 some out there shit. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile. <laughs> for... <laughs> Or me- meanwhile, you can go and watch all the Santo and Blue Demon matches. I mean, movies where he's fighting werewolves and mummies and vampires. That's true. That, I mean, that that that's something we don't get here in in America. And and if we're really exposing this 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 uh, lucha Mexican wrestling thing, you know, via lucha underground. I mean, man, where are the werewolves at? So, <laughs> um, season five, I, I right? Know. I thought I saw something in the trailer that might hit this. <laughs> okay. Oh, so what? Dude, I'm, he, saw, I'm he, he saw a darewolf. Yes, I saw yeah. a darewolf. Oh. <laughs> I, I it was in the nature club. <laughs> the, yeah. Hey, if the Blade movies have taught me anything, any supernatural creature can learn how to use nunchucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that's true too that's true too all right anything else we want to touch base on lucha i mean when it's it, it, man how how much more can we get out of chris here tonight <laughs> we 
we've gone too far. We we have yeah, so we much. Have... I honestly don't want to know much more. I no. just want to no. take it in. So well, oh. I say hard sell and, and let's get, get on to something else. Well, now I as do, it I is. Have one more question. Are, are there going to be any more in-ring luchadoras? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. There'll is be a lot. Be, is there like a division or are they just going to be interspersed with the male girls like normal? Just like normal. Girls fight okay. the guys. But girls will fight the girls too. Okay. I, I saw. Yes, there are. Somebody, I think it was Lance Storm or somebody, was tweeting that they watched the first episode of, of Lucha Underground, and yeah, I re- and he hated that Sexy Star got beat in the first match. Right, I read that, but but it's just one of those. That's not the point, you know, and, and that's like kind of how we think about other wrestling, you know, and and that leads to something, leads to something, leads to something, like versus you know, like you talk about WWE, something get dropped. So why did that thing happen? Well, wait till next week. Well, wait, next nothing happened next week because we decided not to go back there, right? You guys have a roadmap because you're 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 more compartmentalized than than that, you know, that everything's done together. So you know, it's kind of like let's see how he is after five episodes if he goes that far. Yeah, so. I was like, come on, Lance, like get in, just get into the story a little bit, and then come back and you can you can call me an idiot again for doing that. Yeah, there you go, there you go. Now, I just want to say also about that. That was one of my favorite moments of the first season because it's like a slap in the face at the end of that first episode mm-hmm. that, like, just for me watching, like woke me up and I'm like, oh my god, what am I watching? And kind of like it, it kind of propelled me to to keep watching and see everything else, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And plus, if you if you have like someone be super duper strong right off the bat, then there's no redemption. Like, like some of the best thing about Lucha Underground was um, Son of Havoc lost a lot in the beginning, and by the end of by Ultra Lucha, he was like one of the biggest heralded heroes. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's the that's a great arc. Like it was probably one of my favorite things about uh, Lucha Underground season one was just. Uh, team Dysfunctrios. Oh, do they have a name finally? No. They no, can't okay. decide on it. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's great. Well, uh, thank, thank you, Chris. If you don't mind, stick around. I I, I think we want to definitely pick your brain on some other uh, general wrestling, uh, but I think we'll, we'll certainly be uh, talking about Lucha uh, here and there throughout the rest of the night. So cool. Um, but uh, anyways, hey, uh, you know, Lucha Underground is a great wrestling alternative to if you don't like uh, all the three letter uh, uh, feds hanging out out there on your TV on your Monday night, especially. Uh, but another place you can go is over to indie wrestling us. It's kind of our sister site over there uh, where a lot of productions that we're involved in, including the International Wrestling Cartel, including uh, uh, Renegade Wrestling Alliance here in the Pittsburgh area. But that's not all. Of course, Montreal Theory uh, with Joe Dabrowski, the legend of Virgil and his uh, traveling merchandise table. Oh, that was a good one to film. Um, and, of course, Finding Zach Gowan, a great a great documentary talking about uh, his time in the WWE and, uh, and, and and everything he's dealt with in his road to redemption. And so much more. Even Border City Wrestling is uh, on there, represented uh, Vicious Outcast Wrestling. And a uh, great column by one Matt Carlins around the indies. It's the way I keep up, actually, uh, to what's going on in indies every weekend. He, 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 Matt is doing an awesome job bringing in everybody's Instagram and Twitter videos. So there's a visual representation. They're just, hey, here's a guy you never heard of versus a guy you never heard of. And it was a pretty decent match and something happened. Like it was the back of a PW magazine in black and white and then why do i freaking care about this right and, and, and matt's really doing a really good job about representing that that's right and, uh we had a, a news just drop uh tonight and uh yeah, yeah thank you for saying that sword yeah as opposed to uh, a lot of the dirt sheets that you'll read where you'll get your uh your text-based results we will actually show you a picture or two so you know what these guys look like and how they move and it kind of helps you attach them a little bit better and uh Definitely check out the, the Around the Indies column this week. You will witness, um, well, in case you haven't heard already, this dude named Connor Braxton has become the king of the hoverboard on the Indies. Oh, no. And he's at it again. Uh, he's doing giant swings with a hoverboard uh, during matches. Fox Sports has picked up on this now on their website. This dude's going to blow up. He's already blowing up. Uh, his, his prices for bookings are going up by the minute, um, him and his hoverboard. So good for him. And, uh, yeah, check it out and uh, see what he's up. Of course, inspi- in- info in there of uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling and, uh, and and everything else. And check out our friends. And, of course, the Indie Mayhem Show lives there as well. It's a great conversation with uh, people from all over. 
um, including a great one here with uh, uh, Krista Joseph we did a little bit ago, too, about Lucha Underground. So go check it out, IndieWrestling.us. Sign up for the newsletter there, and you'll get a free uh, uh, International Wrestling Cartel show. It was, the, I believe, the 100th show under Norm Connors back in the day, back in 2009. The names on it are tremendous, including somebody named AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, Delirious, all, all over that thing. The best of the best that came through Pittsburgh were rep- represented on that show. You get it for free just for signing up so you can get some info on indie wrestling and what you pick up. Um, so a lot of people picking up some uh, matches and, and thank you so much for supporting the indies, supporting indie wrestling.us and for everybody out there supporting the wrestling mayhem show. So I feel, I don't know. I, I feel wrong. Almost it's coming up. We got to mention it. It's the start of WrestleMania season. Uh, it's the start where, where we start getting excited about the, the mainstream wrestling right now. It's the Royal rumble this weekend with a whole new twist on it. And, and there's a lot of speculations. Uh, everybody's talking about this weekend. Are we going to see an AJ Styles? Is Daniel, I, didn't even, I didn't catch I saw there's news about Daniel Bryan, but I didn't even, even, even uh, uh, get a chance to, to, to see what that was about. Um, other than there's good vibes going on there. There's speculation. Maybe we should add a number 31 to the Royal Rumble if you're doing your polls. I, I see, I, and I see, I see, I see heads shaking and nodding as I'm saying all that stuff. Uh, most, most violently is is Mad Mike down there, and uh, and, and Matt the other way. Um, uh, you know, Royal Rumble match. What the heck is going to happen here? I think Roman's just going to walk away with it. I think Roman's going to look strong and go through 29 men. Myself, or thirty, or thirty, or thirty other men. <laughs> if the if the if the speculations. And, and, and fantasy bookings are hold true. Hey, it, well, the word is people think that uh, uh, we're just going to drop uh, Triple H as a, as a surprise number thirty-one. He has to go through at the last minute, right? I don't think that's going to be the case. No, I don't <laughs> I think so either. See the look on Chris's face. <laughs> I do think that's going to be the case. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, the Raw writer, the WWE writers, have uh, have been reading some. Lucha Underground ideas uh, that things have, that have happened. So I <laughs> have a sneaking suspi- suspicion that if it is a mirror of what I think it, it is a mirror of, then I wouldn't be surprised. No, wait, 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 wait. Does this <laughs> happen? Is, is this is this the first time? Have you seen? Have you noticed uh, Lucha things popping up like that? Oh, we got. He, he's got. Well, yeah, I mean, they basically tried to tried to sign our entire roster and. Uh, pretty much tried to shut us down you know oh, but geez. like I, I don't know man i i know those guys and uh you know i don't know <laughs> I, I got a sneaky suspicion mm. Mm. sign your entire roster what were they like like banking up the brakes truck for in helico what the hell was going on <laughs> Dude, they, I mean, yeah, we, we know del but, rio came back but i mean but, got- but i think i think that's what they want to do is just take everybody sign them in the nxt and then and then you know wipe out companies. I, I know they try to do it with TNA too. And, and, uh, I'm sure ROH too, but, uh, um, I think it, it makes sense for them. They pay somebody $750 a week and put them in developmental. And then in the meantime, another company they try to take away, you know, companies rosters, you know, and they, they can just leave those guys down at NXT. They don't care. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think they're just trying to win the midweek war. No. Yeah. <laughs> brutal, man. I don't know. I, I couldn't help it. I'm a little sensitive about the su- about the subject of them, so. Uh, but maybe that won't happen. But I do have a feeling Triple H is going to come out number 31 and steal the Royal Rumble and the World uh, Championship. Mm, mm. So, what do you think when you see the uh, reports of the uh, four guys from New Japan being brought over? Yeah, I, I mean, I, hopefully they'll do something with them soon. I, I don't know, but uh, you know, we'll see. They have Samoa Joe, and he's just in nxt why Being awesome but yeah. yeah yeah but i don't know i would have some of those guys show up in the rumble and i don't know do something i, I mean are we going to talk about wrestlemania at some point today uh a little bit in a way okay so when we get there we'll talk i'll talk about what i think for wrestlemania okay oh you <laughs> well you can you can help us book that idea for wrestlemania later in the show actually after we get the beta idea <laughs> so maybe we'll get around that discussion that there a real live booker right but, but but aside from that let's say so we got brock lesnar as a part of this we I, the wyatts you know coming in i think are, are are built very well to be a threat to this thing 
Um, uh, uh, Garza, what what do you think is going to go on here with the Royal Rumble? You, do you think it's going to be rowing? Think it's going to be trips? Is it going to be somebody completely off the wall at this point? Uh, I honestly believe uh, Reigns is not walking now because they still have fast lane to do damage control. Okay. I I haven't really thought about the number thirty one spot because I just figure they'll just do it at number thirty. But I guess the thirty one is even better because. Yesterday they were saying that there's gonna they're promising six uh, former winners, right? Yeah. And I'm I'm thinking, okay, so it has to be El Rio, Sheamus, Reigns, Lesnar, and my other two were Triple H and, and McMahon. So I guess that's works for for 31. That was interesting that they just dropped that little nugget into their into their hype package. The six. Yeah, and I actually went through the past Royal Rumble winners. I'm doing process of elimination, and it's like, yeah, basically by saying that six former Rumble winners will be in that match, they've guaranteed that you're going to get most likely Triple H. And, I mean, the other person would have to be either McMahon or Orton or Undertaker. That's basically your three options for the six former the Rock. champion. Or the Rock. <laughs> But, I mean, I think we've... Oh, no, wait. The Rock never won a Rumble. Never mind. But, no, no, he Rumble, did. Where He won, I, he won in have, 2000. But... Rock won in 2000, but oh, sort, yeah, but but sort yeah, of didn't. Oh, won, even though Big Show won. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't even think about it. I never noticed that before until it, it came up all over the Royal Rumble articles this year. <laughs> so, um, I, I don't know. I You know, I kind of... I wonder if they technically think that the Big Show won that Rumble. No, they don't. No, I don't think <laughs> no, so. Exactly. No. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think in my mind, I want like I want to seriously like believe that Heath Slater could walk away. That's my that's why the Rumble was always exciting to me. You know uh, that completely Bushwhacker Luke could have become could have won that Royal Rumble back in the day, right? Uh, and that didn't happen. Um, well, Sorg, I think the only time they accomplished something like that was when Santino almost won. Right. 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 And, and and I think that was one of the better better moments there because it, it it brought us back to think maybe maybe you know um, I think it'll be fun I think it'll be interesting um, but uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be the Roman story and, I, and I'm afraid I think this is the bigger speculation here guys I think this is the bigger pick out of this um will the crowd boo whatever happens at the end of royal rumble as hard as the last two years in a row um or are, row. are we okay just because it's not happening in pennsylvania this year <laughs> I, i'm i'm predicting the biggest pop of the night will be whoever eliminates roman reigns okay just just uh, and and that person will be the most over face for the next five minutes <laughs> okay all right all right and and then whatever from there, we're not going to have chance of, of of Daniel Bryan, for instance, like the last two years or anything oh, like we that. We could, we could, we could. Sork depends on his Twitter activity. If he strongly implies that he'd like to be there, then you know people might get on board. I, I'm just if hoping people maybe... believe there's a chance, then they will be disappointed when he's not there. I right. think we've learned that. Yeah, I'm yeah. just hoping Wade Barrett gives up his spot to Papa Shango this year. That would be awesome. <laughs> what? <laughs> He's still I've been begging for Papa Shango to return to any friend that I had on the creative team forever. Like at some point, come on. I don't want to see the Godfather. I want to see Papa Shango. Mm-hmm. So does everybody else. They just <laughs> won't go there. Can, can we just, just have a Papa Shango and Boogeyman moment at some point? All right. I mean, that, that just seems really to make good. the most sense. Or Papa Shango revives Sister Abigail, and that's how we get that character back from the dead. Ooh. Or, or, and maybe this is maybe nobody's thought about this. How about the Wyatts meet Skinner? <laughs> hey, he, yeah, he worked <laughs> in NXT. Why the hell not? Right? Does he, does he still work NXT? Yeah. Oh, cool. I, I believe so. I, I know he he ran FCW. Um, like that was his promotion, I guess. But uh, I, I didn't know that he was still on uh, past that. So. Hey, there you go. I, I do I do think because of the lack of roster this year, I heard this on another podcast and I'm echoing the idea for all of us. This year's WrestleMania is having their gimmick battle royal. <laughs> really? Yes. Absolutely. But their their twist was it can only be um, gimmicks from the Attitude Era and beyond. Okay. Uh, Chris. So we can have Vladimir Kozlov in there. Is, is, is Chris getting a call here? 
uh, to come back for the Rumble gimmick. No. Battle Royal. <laughs> only only pre Amon gimmicks are allowed in the gimmick battle royal this year. Hey, you should have seen when we did. Andy they almost Ma- predate Amon. We, to be allowed. we a side note. You got to see uh, on Indie Mayhem Show 103 we recorded before this. Um, our guest was younger than Amon, and you should have seen how happy he was. <laughs> By the way, Eamon is in the hangout hanging out for the, the second segment, so he's completely hearing all this and we're seeing his reactions. Oh, he's he, he just unmuted. Hi, Eamon. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let me throw this out because this is like the big cloud that's hanging over this whole deal. Because last week we had um, our pal Justin Labar on, and he was explaining why he would never, why he would not want to have Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns in the Rumble. At the same time, mm-hmm. and explained how he, you'd have to get rid of Brock before Roman would come in. Well, now we know that Roman's going to be number one. So it's virtually inevitable that him and Brock are going to be in the match at the same time, which gets us – if Roman's going to win, how do you get rid of Brock Lesnar? That's like the biggest issue for me like well, going into this thing. And basically you are going to go – I mean I don't see many people predicting Brock is going to win. So at some point, somebody's got to get rid of Brock, and who in the heck is that going to be? You know what would be really surprising? If number two was Triple H and he eliminated Roman Reigns and we were guaranteed a new champion for the rest of the Rumble. That would be awesome to me. Like I love when they when they have triple threat matches like that where it's um a three way dance where the champion's eliminated first mm-hmm. and then yeah. you're guaranteed a new champion. That puts a sense of excitement into the whole thing. It it, it turns because it- the longer Roman stays in that match, the longer it should be like He's going to fucking win, isn't he? It's kind of the, it's kind of the uh, when you're watching a TV show and we're like, well, how's he going to get out of this one? You know, like, you know, the, you know, the main guy is not going to die. So here we go. You know, you know, like the John Cena dates. Um, uh, quick comment from the chat room. Yeah. Bobby says an eagle will swoop in from the rafters and knock Brock over the top rope. Mm. Wait, is he predicting Jack Swagger's a living thing? I think he predicted Jack Swagger's uh, – <laughs> <laughs> so the swagger. Well, yeah, the mascot, the eagle costume. The swagger soaring eagle. Oh, that thing no, was awesome. I forgot right. about wasn't, that. Wasn't that Chavo? <laughs> I don't know. It, it was, was it, right? I thought it was Chavo. It was probably yeah, Hector the eagle, again. Oh, the eagle? Yeah. Yeah, God, I can't remember when we did that. What, who the heck was the eagle? That was Chavo. I, I thought I remember hearing it was Chavo. Just under the mask. Oh, this is uh, this Uncle Hector. Yes. Uh, no, that, that was a different bird of prey. <laughs> prey? Really? I don't know. Um, yes, we we're, we were praying for that segment to end, Sorg. Oh, yes, yes. All right, so there's there's the rumble itself. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens, uh, but I, I think it's an interesting story going in this, and we'll see we'll see if we can get out of the, 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 the cursed Royal Rumbles of years past at this point. Uh, but we do, hey, we have matches at this show. Did you know that? Um, so we went from zero to, to three matches, uh, 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 from a Monday night, uh, Clistro Del Rio, of course, uh, I've enjoyed their, both of their matches that they had. Um, um, I don't like that they, they're hot potatoing the U S belt like that. Uh, so, but I, either way, I think we'll get a pretty good match out of that. Any thoughts on, on where they're going, uh, with the U S title and, and, and gee, I'm just glad to see Clisto getting in there. Clisto has to get that belt back. I think Clisto is going to get that belt back too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know why they had Del Rio win it back, but I think Kalisa is going to take it back again. Right, that'll be a good one. Um, and of course, Divas match Charlotte Becky. Uh, we were talking about this on the Raw wrap up last night. Uh, uh, Mike, uh, you know, I forget which way we were going on this, uh, but uh, you know, pretty. I mean, uh, great promo, and we're really kind of loving the idea of, of Ric Flair and just Charlotte over his shoulder, just reacting. To, to him accepting the match for her. Yeah, it was the best camera angle Raw had done in a long time. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if they just recently saw the thing with NXT and Eva Marie and Asuka, and they're like, oh, that's cool. We should do something like that. And they had Charlotte behind Ric Flair, who's being super animated, and meanwhile, Charlotte looks like someone just smelled a fart. Mm-hmm. But it was really good, and I... I I honestly don't even know who I want to win that match because I think either story would work depending on how it happens. I don't care who wins. I'm just hoping this is a chance for them to bring the NXT level matches to the Divas division. 
because I don't feel like we've had much of that at this point. And these, these are the only kind of opportunities I think they're going to get at this point on that level. Um, well, this is their... It's a pretty slim card, so they kind of have the opportunity to get 20 minutes out of it. Right. Well, I don't know about 20 minutes, but but even whatever they get um, um, could be could be the chance, right? Um, well, it's, it's the best opportunity that they've had, Stork. I mean, they actually have, like, a long story that's been drawn out. You're, like, one awesome video package away from, like, really getting everybody warmed up for that match when it happens. Just put it in the right place. The card, give it the right amount of time. I think it could work. And we could finally get that NXT-level women's match. Finally, on a main roster pay per view, it could happen. Mm-hmm. And another one, of course, uh, we, we have a, uh, a tag match. I didn't catch it. This one was actually happening. Uh, New Day and Usos, of course, uh, you know, Slammy Tag Team of the Year that everybody I know on this show is so mm-hmm. happy about uh, the Usos. Um, it'll be entertaining, and we will still mourn the death of Francesca the trombone. So, although, did, did it come back? Was the trombone on Sports Center tonight? Yes. Yes. That's awesome. Yes, there were three trombones on Sports Center tonight. Oh. There was a tiny trombone, and there was a medium trombone, and there was a big old daddy trombone. I, I, I don't assume know that's what's Francesca. going on there. I, I assume, assume that's Francesca's family. Francesca was reborn like Mil Muertes, and is now more powerful than ever. <laughs> I gotta say, I never, huh? I never named my trombone. Me neither. No. Well, now you can't. Did we all play trombone. Did this. Krista Joseph, did you play trombone in high school, too? Uh, I, I played alto sax. Alto oh, sax. Nice <laughs> oh, you missed. I pulled out the trombone. Hey, did everybody play trombone? I uh, played trombone. Wow. I, nice. I, I played guitar in, like, grade school. What? You were the coolest kid out of all of us. So. Nope. Nope. Definitely not true. <laughs> <laughs> Garza, are you a musician? Uh, I did play uh, guitar. Oh, damn of course you did. Damn it. Uh, I couldn't play. Mariachi, though, it was acoustic. I couldn't play hey, anything else. That's Garza, why. Are you really El Mariachi Loco? No, no, no. I'm just El Mariachi Tranquilo. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, other than that, and then we do have a last man standing, Kevin Owens and Dean Ambrose. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, just the build up has been fun. Again, I'm the only one watching SmackDown. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I think they're doing some cool... I mean, it's basically... So since Roman became champ, Roman's just kind of stepped aside. He's become the John Cena and doesn't work Tuesday nights anymore, uh, which is just great because now it's the, the Kevin Owens and, and Dean Ambrose show. Uh, so I'm completely cool with that. Yeah, I think that match kind of needs to start off the pay-per-view. You think? Just, like, start it I, strong and... Well, I feel like they, like, especially with the type of match that those guys usually have, they're going to need a break before the Rumble. Right, right. Or do they even get to the Rumble is the other thing. Oh, uh, that would be really unfortunate if neither of them made it to the Rumble. Well, hey, I haven't heard either of them mentioned for the Rumble yet. So, well, know. no. Um, uh, Paul Heyman mentioned that Brock Lesnar could go up against Dean Ambrose in the Rumble. He did. Oh, well, there you go. Then. I think he might even mention Kevin Owens for that matter. No, he didn't. He, he didn't. specifically didn't. <clears throat> no one talks about Kevin Owens. <laughs> Well, uh, it'll be interesting to see. I don't know. A- anything else sticks out? Uh, uh, Royal Rumble. What you got? Any like wild speculation? What we might see at Royal Rumble? I I think AJ Styles at thirty. You think I, so? I think that's real. I think they're in Orlando, and he's just gonna come out and he's gonna say something like "Hi, Dixie" to the camera. I think it's gonna <laughs> be really fun. And too sweet for Dixie through the camera. <laughs> I think there will be. A NXT guy. I don't think it'll be the one any of us want. I think there will be an NXT guy. Who, who do you think it's going to be, Matt? I, I think it might be Baron Corbin. Oh, Ooh. actually, Do, doing the Rusev from two years ago. But I'm, I'm, I'm calling it, and I, I I say that Owens will be in the Rumble, and Sami Zayn will eliminate him. Okay. All right. All, All right. right. All right. Because you are 2004 Mick Foley and just uh, uh, Chris, do you have, do you have a crazy yes. do you have a crazy uh, speculation for a rumble that doesn't include something that may have may be yet to happen in Lucha Underground? Well, I'm predicting <laughs> the real the, I'm predicting that the real rumble will be happening in Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh no! The Arizona Cardinals are going to win the NFC. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> That's what I'll be watching. The, but uh, do I think anything's crazy? Hopefully, they're smart enough to let either Samoa Joe into the Royal Rumble 
or AJ Styles. Come on, give the people what they want. Make it happen. Or both. Why not? Yeah, both. both. That, yeah. That's yeah. proven effective, so it wouldn't be a bad idea. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That'd be great. They just end off, and we just end up with like if Joe <laughs> and AJ become the final part of the final four, just be awesome. Oh, it'd be amazing. It'd be absolutely yeah. amazing. So that uh, well, my, my last uh, wild speculation. Uh, since also we haven't talked about Gallows and Anderson, they're gonna debut and they're gonna help Bully Ray win the title and reform Aces and Nines. Yeah, I'm calling. <laughs> <laughs> but somebody will get confused. Somebody will get confused in the writing process, and they'll just call him DOA. Do you think Gallows will get hit, hit in the head and go back to being Festus at some point? <laughs> no, just but as soon as the bell rings, he's just gonna be like, "What?" <laughs> 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 oh boy! Oh, oh we can have El Torito ride him around. So oh, oh, great! What, whatever happened to his partner? What was, it, what was his name? Jesse? Fest- Jesse and Festus, wasn't it? Yep. Yep. What? yep. Slam, yep. Ma- slam, ma- aka Slam Master J. Oh, yeah. I forgot. With, with, with him, right? <laughs> Man, <laughs> oh my god, I forgot about the name Slam Master J. You hear stuff like that, and you don't feel so bad for Zack Ryder anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I think surprise showing. I think we get one of the social outcasts in the final four. I can't even finish that. <laughs> Never mind. No, Never mind. I, no, actually, I, I agree with that. I think one of them might get like destroyed by Lesnar on his way out to the ring mm-hmm. and they pull um, like they're just lying on the outside of the ring the whole time. I could Three absolutely see that. So maybe, maybe, maybe one of the social outcasts does the Santino. Uh, Curtis Axel, he was never eliminated. Sorg. There you go. I'd like to see Axel do about 50 minutes in the rumble and do like about a dozen near mm-hmm. elimination spots. during the Or rumble. do we, awesome. do we close the loop on last year and just eliminate them twice from the Royal rumble this year? Hear that, or Axel's out second, and Roman eliminates him right away. Oh, sorry, sorry to interrupt because I did. You mentioned social outcasts. I have to chime in on, on a theory because uh, my theory is that you can't you can't do that because you have to have all the social outcasts in the ring at the same time. So you debut the surprise entrance of the Yeti, so they can Daniel Peter him. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Okay. Wow. <laughs> that might. That, that, that there might. You go. Oh, you mean the Yeti from Tough Enough, not the Yeti from the. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So I, I got really confused for a straight. second. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, like I meant the WCW Yeti. I meant the <laughs> Why not? From like 20 years ago. <laughs> Why not? We can put Great Kali in toilet paper. Hey, Riz would best, love that. The greatest call of Tony Schiavone's career. <laughs> Yate. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see what's happening at Royal Rumble, but uh, uh, it, 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 coming up soon, we're going to look at the big question and uh, look forward to WrestleMania as we book it with the Mayhem Mania. But first, let's. Uh, hey, we just celebrated ten years of the Wrestling Mayhem show this past week, and uh, it was really awesome for you guys to, to uh, sit down and tell us, answer some questions about your origins, about other things. But this week, I want you guys to take a look at um, who the crew thinks should get on the show in 2016. There's some interesting stories, some interesting ideas. Uh, let's just take a look. We'll be right back. I want to bring back uh, uh, Armando Estrada. He was a lot of fun. Triple H. Why not aim for the stars? Let Triple H come down from his throne and, and Dane our, uh, our podcast with his uh, ratings-boosting presence. I definitely want to see more uh, Lucha Underground uh, wrestlers related, but I think that the major show has been missing my co-patreon partner, Bo Diddy. Bo, I'm calling you out. We want you back. I would like them to get some some quality time with someone behind the scenes maybe like uh joey styles or even paul Heyman. i want to see the, i want to see bill peduto the beloved mayor of pittsburgh on the wrestling mayhem show super oprah and oprah and everybody gets presents from both that's double the presents i know sorg has the connection so i think we eventually need to get virtual like i think that's the 
that's the we've made that's it moment. That's the quintessential. That's the it's, second it's, that it's gotta it's gotta happen. I don't think we have to do any more podcasts after that. We we peaked at that point. Booker T's on my list. And that seems like more possible every day, it seems so. But no, I, I'd like to also kind of return to some guests that we've talked to in the past that we haven't talked to in several years. Like, I'd love to see if we can get Johnny Gargano on before he gets scooped up by WWE completely, for instance. I want to see Big E on our couch. I'd imagine he'd be more sprawled because I don't think all of his muscles would fit on it. I'll, I'll echo Garza's statement that we should get some Lucha Underground people. Uh, I would also like Jimmy DeMarco to come back on the main show. Uh, personally, he's a personal favorite of mine. Also, I feel that the Mayhem shows only have one real bad interview. And I feel like there's a redemption story happening in 2016. I think we need to bring back Puppet. <laughs> I feel like we need to bring back Puppet because we were talking about Puppet on the TNA Asylum show. So I feel like that needs to be part of this redemption story. I, I think we can do this again. Hey guys, we're back, and please uh, uh, check out check out the YouTube, check out the Facebook. We'll have some more videos rolling out from that night. Some other uh, uh, fun fun background stories. And, and thank you so much. I, I, I know uh, uh, Mike Garza, uh, Amon, you guys hopped on and not being there, and I, I know the girls got you to answer some questions too as part of that. So that was really cool. A, a nice surprise at the end of the night as well. So thanks so much for that. Um, also, hey, there'll be some more videos coming up this week. Uh, this Thursday, the twenty first. Uh, we'll be rolling out the Mayhemies. It's our awards of the year. Uh, we had a, a sit down to help uh, uh, the selections for the the big the big nominees. You know, best male wrestler, best female wrestler, best match, best show, stuff like that. Our good friends Justin Plummer, the promoter of the International Wrestling Cartel, uh, Joe Dombrowski, announcer uh, with you know uh, with the IWC, with Ring of Honor, and, and and of course producer of some great documentaries that we discussed earlier, and uh, uh, Chris Larusso, also a guy that's wrestled with Ring of Honor and a uh, ten year veteran in the game. Uh, uh, kind of uh, picking through and seeing who are the best of the year, and we'll uh, open voting and we'll have some other stuff like interview of the year stuff like that. I'll be coming up here this Thursday. Stay tuned for that and uh, check uh, follow a Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, uh, YouTube, and Twitter uh, to get those updates. They'll be rolling out all day Thursday. So let's get into the big question, and Mac Harlins has it for us this week. Yes, thank you, Sorg. Um, well, this is kind of a downer to start things off, well, but uh, I thought it was a good chance to kind of uh, celebrate a, um, um, a part of professional wrestling that sometimes doesn't get the attention that it deserves. But uh, earlier this week, Iron Mike Sharp passed away. And if you grew up watching Saturday morning wrestling like I did, um, he was a constant, usually losing, often yelling, but basically losing. Um so simply put, I just, um, you know, just struck me that maybe it's time for us to celebrate these guys who go in there and, and, and do the work and aren't quite as celebrated as some of their other uh, contemporaries. So I just want to know, who is your favorite enhancement talent slash jobber of all the times? Or even just one that sticks out in your mind as a personal favorite? Hmm. Who has on to start off with? I'm, I'm still working on mine a little bit. Can I go first? Or? Go for it. Yeah, sure. absolutely. Well, I mean, come on. Very horrible. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest enhancement talent of all time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Barry Horowitz, I, I love that. Didn't he have a shirt that just had the handprint over his back shoulder? Yeah, he had a cape. Yeah. Was on it, I think, too. He had the cape. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, I'm going to go a little obscure. And I'm gonna say Freddie Joe Floyd. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure why Freddie Joe Floyd sticks stuck out in my brain so much. Probably because of the name, but it was just uh, like it was like seeing an old friend that you really didn't like. <laughs> it's just like you know, you know, he's gonna be in there. He's gonna have maybe a five minute match, and he's he's gonna be looking up at the lights. But it was it was fun to watch him work. Okay. Okay. Uh, what about you, uh, Garza? Um, okay, I'm gonna go with one. They they're not exactly the wrestlers, but more of a gimmick. And there's a tag team that has mostly been used to enhance, and that is Los Conquistadores. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> that's that's more of a gimmick than the actual wrestlers because the wrestlers tend to change inside those masks. But uh, I just think they're like an awesome tag team. Uh, the, the idea of just gold, gold all over. So <laughs> I'm going with Los Conquistadores. Hey, Garza, be fair. They are one-time WWE World Tag Team Champions. True. That is true. That's true. That is true. <laughs> Every once in a while, they get their comeuppance, right? Um, I, I think I think we definitely need to talk about. Um, I think the jobber of all jobbers, the Brooklyn Brawler. Yeah, Lombardi. I mean, I mean, and, and he's 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 kind of be one of the most celebrated uh, jobbers that they've ever had. Um, because uh, I mean, it, they've come around and they brought him back to just get booed, you know. It, like didn't he like become the Boston brawler at some point just to get yes. booed in New York City? Um, yes, he did. And, and 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 strangely, he was part of the Heenan family for a little bit too. Um, I don't know how that all worked out, but uh, but yeah, uh, you know, I got, you got to go with the brawler. He's timeless, Matt. Um, I tell you the one that keeps coming to my mind, and it's bizarre, and I will not be upset if all of you guys kind of shoot me away for saying this, but I've been watching some old ECW, really old ECW on the network, and there's this dude called Surfer Ray Odyssey. And if you think Paul <laughs> Heyman is a genius, you need to see Surfer Ray Odyssey because it will cause you to question that belief. <laughs> dude is out there in board shorts and a tank top with the sunscreen still on his nose. And, uh, oh, I saw that guy. Wow. <laughs> like, what is this? Um, so Surfer Ray Odyssey. I also uh, honorable mention to um, one of the uh, Nitro Jobbers, um, the Desperado Joe Gomez. Oh, uh, I, I, I love that you put in some WCW love. I was going to go with Sergeant Craig Pittman. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, Eamon, what about you? Where was that, that who you're going with? Well, I, Pittman's one. Uh, but we also kind of mentioned before, uh, we started the second half about like how, you know, the period of which the Jobbers kind of rose. Um, but I was very happy, and one of my favorite parts of Raw a couple of years ago, uh, uh, in a much happier time, was the period when Ryback debuted, and we got jobbers each and every week yes. with the most ridiculous <laughs> possible names. <laughs> it, it, is, it was one of those, like, oh, you got to look forward to it kind of things. Um, yeah. It was, it was that, didn't one it was of them that resurgence of the job. It was nice. Didn't one of them have kind of like a Twitter uh, popularity off of it? Uh, Stan Stansky. Yes. Uh, uh, it wasn't like there was one where they like had like they just took two presidents' names and just swapped them and gave it to each of the guys. <laughs> like Actually, one, of them was, one of them was called Jefferson Washington or something. Oh jeez. <laughs> um, I'm I'm also gonna give an honorable mention to a TNA driver. Shark Boy. Oh, oh Shark Boy is a good one. Yeah, He's Shark a good Boy, one. especially when he became Stone Cold Shark Boy, mm -hmm. and he mm -hmm. was eating donuts through his mask. Oh, now, oh. Uh, now that you now that you bring up TNA, you realize how much I like. You remind me how much I miss North Firm and Dewey. Boss. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Dewey, Dewey and North. That Dewey. was a good time. But they were they were really only EC three specific jobbers. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like they're brought in to lose to one man and one man only because they can take that one percent or like they broke their necks every time <laughs> can, can, can i throw also honorable mention for the period when virgil was more or less a jobber um, <laughs> so basically everything that wasn't the two weeks when he broke up with Ted DiBiase. Right, right, right. And he was like the million dollar champion and everything. <laughs> like I remember, and then I remember like, like specifically that one issue of WWF magazine where there was a angry letter in the back where he was mad about uh, uh, WWF magazine, not, not writing about him more. And then like whoever's writing it, probably Vince Russo uh, said, well, if you win more, um, you know, and, you know, very, very, very pointedly. And I'm just like, wow. WF Magazine's a dick. Um, but <laughs> there you go. And this is like around, what, 93 or something, right? So. And then you got to know Virgil. As if you only knew. And then I got to hang out in Virgil's living room. That was fun. And you can check out those results over at IndieWrestling.us. <laughs> 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 
Jeez. And damn, whoever said that they won it. Eamon, Eamon is completely taking that Virgil interview if we ever booked that. So it's fine. I told you I'd take it. Well, next time you visit us in Pittsburgh, I'll take you to his house. <laughs> so. I had to sit next to him on a plane once, and it was it was not even wrestling related. And he wouldn't stop talking the entire flight. And finally, I just had to pretend like I was sleeping and sick him on somebody else. But man, no, wait, 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 wait! Did he? Did he? Not shut up! Did he know you were involved in wrestling? I unfortunately had a WWE. I had a WrestleMania jacket on. That oh, oh no. all right, all right. And then he recognized one of the photographers just from back in the day or whatever. And the next thing oh, you know, no. it was he was he was selling himself. Man. Oh, it's great. Himself. It's great. Yeah, no, I had to spend three days next to him at a at a at a con because they're like, oh, they, they must put me by him because I was selling wrestling DVDs and promoting the podcast. And oh, that was that just started it. And then Joe Dabrowski did, and then. And then he got like 14,000 likes on, on the list of everything he learned from Virgil <laughs> on Facebook. And that that's what turned into this video project. So there you go. Um, but anyways, that was fun. Uh, let us know. Uh, WMS Big Question. Hashtag WMS Big Question. Let us know your favorite enhancement talent, uh, jobbers, whatever you want to call them, uh, over on, uh, over on uh, uh, the, the Twitters or the, social, or, I'm sorry, the uh, Facebook for Wrestling Mayhem Show, <clears throat> at Mayhem Show on Twitter. So now is the time for what we've all been waiting for. Uh, it is the Mayhem Mania. It is week two. Uh, the big board is there. There are technical improvements over uh, over the, the the Mayhem Mania Central. I, I don't. I, I can't see that actually. Is it too bright? It's too bright. Got the. We'll work on that. All right, we'll Let's go back that. to the old big board. <laughs> these aren't these aren't the giant HD monitors you have on the new set that that are perfectly brightened to your. <laughs> We'll work on that. We'll work on. We're gonna that. work on this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sorg, I sent you the link in the Slack doc. Okay, okay. All right. Anyway, this is uh, this is Mayhem Mania round two. Um, it's a uh, kind of a competitive thought experiment. Um, where basically we try to create the best WrestleMania card possible using only wit and shenanigans and maybe a little bit of luck. So <clears throat> basically, we're trying to create an eight match card. Uh, for beginners, last week we created four matches. This week we will create four more out of thin air. Next week we will begin the process of making changes to the existing eight matches. That is where the fun begins. But this is part of the heavy lifting right here. <clears throat> Important thing to point out, especially for our newcomers, <clears throat> Alijo Del Cueto, yep. um, <laughs> my duty to inform you, um, all of this must be done within the bounds of the current reality. Um, so you cannot, um, as much as we want to see Mil Muertes at WrestleMania, we know he's under contract for Lucha Underground, and this cannot happen. Um, okay. and you know something we don't. Um, if you're free to tell us that, we will tell everybody else. So they have to be on the roster? Could they it has have to be, been on the roster? Or it has, it has to be, to be in be that world? Within, uh, simply put, it has to be within the realm of possibility. Mm -hmm. Basically, we have AJ Styles already booked because that is a possibility. That is a yeah, possibility. And, and, and we Labar, know he's not contracted anywhere else. Right, and Labar right. was under uh, and Labar was on last week under good authority saying, "Yeah, he'll be there by WrestleMania." Um, so, so let's um, go through the four matches we created last week. Mm -hmm. um, what was it? Ah, uh, yes, the New Day versus Enzo and Big Cass, Kalisto versus Sami Zayn versus Neville. Kevin Owens versus Chris Jericho in a suit. Yes, in a suit. Yes. Or, how, how about a suit jacket with no shirt on like you had last night? Nope. <laughs> or, nope. Or a very, suit vest with short pants. Very definitely not okay. And, I, and no, by the yeah, way, Chris by the way, Jericho is the best jerk in a suit. Um, and, and, and I want to put, I want to, and I also put the, the, the added stipulation. He brings back long pants. That's true too. But the most important distinction the suit. Yes, yes. Right, okay. Because that's, that's the last time he was entertaining. Yes, and LeVar, the internet jack-off match presented by Chair <laughs> Shot Reality is AJ Styles versus... I love you link Chair Shot Reality in that, too. That's great. <laughs> that's great. I don't know. He came on. It's the nicest thing we can do. Okay, so we've got to come up with four more matches here. I haven't come up with an order yet, so I'll just start from left to right on my screen, and that means Garza, you go first. I wasn't ready for the Garza, you're muted. Cool, you didn't hear me. I, I, will, I will allow you to pass. You can pass if you want to. We'll come back to you. 
Yes, pass. I need to pass. Oh no. I need to review the roster. <laughs> you need to review the roster. You're like, who's still left? Yeah. <laughs> who's not injured? <laughs> um, all right, Chris. Um, do you want to jump in here? Oh, what do I have to do here? You have to create <laughs> you must create a match. Any match you want. Any match I want. Tag match, three way, four way. Don't Just do a battle royal. Yeah, no that battle ruins way. it for everybody. All right, Samoa Joe versus The Undertaker. Oh, jeez. Nice. Oh, wow. There you go. Nice. You're great at this game. This is like. El hijo de Cueto throwing down. Woo. Woo. There's a special opportunity involved. <laughs> yeah, unique opportunity. <laughs> unique opportunity. Braver consequences. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hot wow. diggity. Wow. Well, that's good. Amen. <laughs> okay, so I had one in mind. Uh, I don't know if this is entirely in the realm of possibility, so correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I'll tell you if it's not. So. Uh, singles match Tyler Breeze versus a returning William Regal. Nice, Amen. Okay. Okay. I was actually thinking about doing that too. I think okay. that's the one story from NXT that unfortunately should have been finished before Tyler left. All right. Before he got de- my- before before he by Mark Henry on Raw. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he threw him so Tyler. far. Poor Tyler. Yeah. Poor Tyler. All right, Mad Mike, you're up, and then we will whip back around to Garza. All right. Um, in a tag team street fight, we have Triple H and his daddy-in-law, Mr. McMahon, versus Roman Reigns and The Rock. 70-year-old Mr. McMahon. Yes. Street hey. fight. Unable, hey. to, unable to open plastic balls, Mr. McMahon. <laughs> hey, you know what? He, he can't open plastic balls, but he can open up a can of whoop-ass, Eamon. Oh, He's still gonna catch that damn chicken. God. Oh. <laughs> I was just about to use Roman Reigns. Ha ha! That's what you get for passing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Garza. Garza, you had all day to prepare for this. I know. I know. That's the worst thing. <laughs> You made the graphics for last week, <laughs> <laughs> which are very kick-ass, by the way. So, Thank you. okay, well, Noah has used uh, Finn Balor, right? Not yet. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna book my two favorite guys for now: Alberto El Patron versus Finn Balor. I don't know who that is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will not call him by his last name. <laughs> we abandoned we abandoned we abandoned that term for a reason. I'm, I'm pretty sure Garz is allowed to use it in that context though. I'm making kind of man. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, okay. oh man. So we got this is not bad, guys. Uh Smojo versus the Undertaker, Tyler Breeze versus William Regal. Triple H and Mr. McMahon versus Roman Reigns and The Rock, and Alberto Del Rio versus Finn Balor to go along with our four other matches. So next week, um, whoever shows up, maybe. Go, maybe as many as six people, and what are five or six contestants in round three of Mayhem Mania will all get to make one change to the existing card. They'll be able to either swap a guy from one match to another. So if you were like, I want Neville to face The Undertaker. You could switch Neville and you could swap Smojo down in this three-way. Oh, wow. Could you or imagine? you could swap an entire match out. You could be like, I got to get, I don't know, I got to get Heath Slater versus uh, El Torito into this thing. So I'm going <laughs> to swap out this match and get that one in. Or you could just... We LC too. We, yeah, LC. we LC too, exactly. <laughs> Wait, we LC? Yeah, two. Um, okay. Or you could just take a wrestler... You know, and just plop him into one. So you're like, you know what? Not enough awesome in this Samoa Joe versus Undertaker match. I'm going to add. It needs <laughs> Papa Shango. He's good to go. 
I, I think it is. I, it, that is within the realm of possibility. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Three way versus Papa Shango. So that those are all options on the table. So that's going to happen next week. That's when the real fun, the real hurt feelings start to come out. So um, <laughs> hopefully everyone will follow along. And uh, and and the goal is that if the match if the match remains unaltered for three straight weeks, starting it now, will, it will graduate to the supercard, to permanence, to the relative safety of our supercard. And the goal is to graduate eight matches up into the supercard. If we could do that before WrestleMania, God bless us. If we don't, we'll figure something out. It'll be all right. We did it last year, so we'll do it again this year. But that's something to look forward to next week. That's awesome. That's awesome. Good. And of course, keep an eye on WrestlingMamShow.com. We'll have uh, uh, the, the links to this and the upgraded matches uh, as we go along. And, uh, and, and, and it, wow. It, 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 and I was sharing around and, and we got some good feedback from some of the, uh, Google plus WWE groups, uh, seemed pretty interested in what we're doing. So maybe we'll help it spread. Maybe we'll be able to get other people doing mayhem manias. Uh, if there's anybody out there doing it, uh, uh, you know, maybe on your, your wrestling group or anything, let us know your results. If you're, if you're, if you're doing that, is, is there a home game version of this that people can, uh, uh check out or, uh, do we have like yeah. kind of a, a we open no. source this game? Yeah, that, that's coming out right after the Lucha Underground DVD of Season 1 comes out of the stores. That's when the home game of Mayhem Mania is coming out. There you go. Just in, time, just in time for Christmas, right? <laughs> I didn't say which year. I, I mean, yes, I, just in time for Christmas. I prefer just in time for Easter. That's me. Just in time for Cinco de Mayo. Got it. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Wink yes. <clears throat> yes. Uh, anyways, <laughs> it's time to find out what we learned from wrestling this week. Uh, Mad Mike, what'd you learn? I, I learned that, that based on the ending of Raw last week, which was awesome, Bray Wyatt doesn't have a chance in hell in the Royal Rumble. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just really sad. All right. All right. What about you, Garza? Uh, I learned that nothing that I have done in my last three one years will matter because next week season two of Lucha on the Ground is back and it's all right with the world. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Matt Carlin's our friend of the mainstream media. What, what's your uh, what, what, what show is this? Uh, what did you learn in wrestling this week? Uh, I'm glad you asked, Sorg. Uh, this week I learned in wrestling that if you're ever playing um, the WWE 2K16 video game, do not slide outside the ring and attempt to punch Miss Elizabeth. That is an automatic disqualification. <laughs> yes, it is. Deal. Yes, it is. Who knew? Now, wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait. Who did you attempt to do that with? Wait, Barry. Wait, Barry. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, so here's the thing, because right before that, there was a match where, where somebody was getting an absolute tussle with Paul Heyman, right? And... You go out and you didn't even like connect the punch, and it just unceremoniously said disqualified and stopped the match. As if, like, I felt like there there was a, a point where a lot of people were punching Miss Elizabeth, and a patch was issued to take that away from you. Um, and, yeah. and they didn't. Okay, Sixteen sexes. It's it's it's, uh, it's how it goes. At least you weren't Lex Luger. Oh, oh. So no. it's like it's the Miss Elizabeth rule or something like that. So I I don't know. Um, should, should I add who I ended up losing to? Who did you lose I, to? I lost to Andrew Palace. Oh, geez. Who's the other player? The I'm zero and two versus Andrew Palace now. Oh, the indignity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll catch you someday. You'll be avenged. You'll be avenged. I'll be smarter, smarter next time. Yeah. Amen, amen. Where, where are you at? Uh, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? Uh, I learned from wrestling this week, specifically Raw, uh, that the whole uh, an evil group of individuals divulge their evil plan uh, is is one of the most overused things. Because I don't get what they were going for in that in the Roman Reigns is number one segment. Of Vince McMahon being, oh, it's Roman Reigns. Let's test it again. Oh, look, it's Roman Reigns again. So are you just going to tell everyone you're, you're stacking the vote or, or stacking the uh, – the whatever it's called. I don't know. Also, Vince McMahon can't open plastic balls. That's the thing I learned this week. Also, that is not the way you pick Royal Rumble numbers. <laughs> yeah, they're like, we're going to we're gonna draw who number one is. Like – what do you like, mean? All, the, all, the tumbler's full of numbers. 
Could you imagine if like they pulled if they pulled out like Sasha Banks' name instead? Yeah, our our joke was that they were gonna just pull out Sasha Banks' name and then look at each other and laugh and throw it away. <laughs> Can you imagine if he would have opened the ball and like opened the and, and like they thought it was gonna be Roman Reigns, they open it and it ends up being like AJ Styles' name is on the like, paper. Oh, that would have been freaking damn awesome. it, we can't we can't do that, damn it. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Right. Okay. Uh, Chris, Chris, Joseph, what what is what did you learn from wrestling this week? I learned that although Lucha Underground will return on January 27th, and a lot of people are looking forward to that, uh, that night I'll be looking forward to something else. A little show called The Midweek. Oh. <laughs> 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 cheap. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that's I, I love the midweek war, man. I can't. I'll be I'll be up all night waiting for it to come out. So yeah. I'm, I'm oh man, we have to go back to four shows again. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! I'm, I'm hoping we go twenty six for twenty six. So this means I can't sit. This means <laughs> wow. a good chance. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna make a bold prediction. You will never lose to TNA. Oh, okay. hey. <laughs> we couldn't. We never. Wait. Uh, <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to think when TNA won the Midway Four once or twice. It, it did happen. They have. They have. They have at yeah. times. But I'm. I'm betting you're not going to lose to TNA because I. I know what happened tonight, and it's a barrel of sad. Oh. <laughs> I'm the guy who likes Impact, and yeah, TNA is not going to win. Don't worry. Oh wow. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm okay with losing to NXT, but losing to TNA, ah, that one would hurt. That would hurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think like, I'm pretty it. sure you guys have beaten TNA on weeks where you haven't aired. <laughs> <laughs> like, but, especially but, running those, running those marathons. Place? Yeah, running <laughs> those marathons. You guys definitely crushed TNA. Yeah, you guys have strangely. <laughs> I got to watch all night long last week. I was like. Oh yeah, this is definitely better than TNA. You guys have been have beating. You seen it before? You've been beating yes. TNA ever since Ultima Lucha won. Somehow, so you know. Um, and Sorg, what'd you learn? This oh, week? what I learned. What I learned that I, I, um, I, you guys can't see this, but hopefully you guys saw the picture over on the Facebook. But I learned that I think I need a Ryback uh, standee in my life because um, that'd be amazing to scare off uh, predators and uh, uh, home break-ins. Um, so if you do get one, you need to cut out the mouth so you can feed him more. That that seems awkward. That seems really awkward. Um, but uh, yeah, only if you think about it. Hmm. But in the meantime, I got Roman. We got Roman. I was say, Here you, you go. Here's your your Did winner. Of the, baby girl. Here's your hey baby girl. I'm gonna win the Royal Rumble. What's up? Uh, so <laughs> there is that. I'm gonna celebrate some moments here in the Mayhem Studio. I'm just gonna hang and out. And every other kind of Girl Scout cookie too. Don't That's right. don't be. <laughs> we got some other things from uh, the, 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 the Facebook. The Riz learned that hype comes in 4X. He won the WW2K tournament, which means he got a, a hype brothers. No, no, it was a stay hype uh, Mojo Raleigh t-shirt in 4X that I demanded that he wears everything. He was uh, uh, telling me today he was looking for Zubas so he could wear it with that in. Um, yeah, uh, to IWC when he's doing a DVD booth for us. Uh, by the way, uh, so yeah, it's a 4X. Um, I paid like four bucks for it off of uh, WB Shop because I just needed something and threw something on clearance in there to get the discounts. And uh, and he looks like a small child when he's wearing it. And it's pretty amazing. <laughs> uh, that video is over on, on the Facebooks and the uh, uh, Twitters as well. Uh, Bobby learned that sometimes out of touch, 70-year-old men have trouble with balls. So we already covered that. And uh, uh, Cars learned, uh, do, 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 nope, nope, nope. He learned that he's starting to suffer withdrawal from not watching wrestling since he's starting to live in the mountains. Yeah, he's up on like a, he's like doing some kind of tech stuff up in a Christian like day camp or something, and he's been very out of touch. Um, <laughs> hey, Carlin's, uh, uh, oh yeah, that was your thing about Miss Elizabeth in two K sixteen. So there you go, um, Roman. I'm, I'm getting. Oh, and Sorg, Sorg, we have to promote one more thing. What? What's that? Tomorrow morning. The Total Divas Recap Return! Oh boy, I can't wait to hear more stories. Uh, more untold I stories. the second half of Total Divas tonight, and it was awesome. 
But, but I, I need to remind everybody about the best part of the Total like Divas it. wrap up. <laughs> was, uh, if, if, that's not, if that's not a ringing endorsement. It's, it's hearing about uh, uh, untold stories of the Carlin's relationships as part of the Total Divas wrap up. That's true. <laughs> like it's, it's a relationship podcast that also discusses total demons. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of you know, it's a it's a twofold thing. Just like we used to be a podcast that never really got around to uh, talking about pro wrestling, you know, back in the day. So, um, man, we've come so far. We've come so far, <laughs> guys. Thank you so much. Uh, WrestlingMayhemShow dot com. Subscribe to everything uh, and hit us up. Of course, uh, the email address, the phone number. If you have any thoughts, 412-206-WMS0. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Good times. Yeah. Uh, hit up all that stuff. And um, and, uh, and and thank you so much to our guest, for Mad Mike, 4883 from Poughkeepsie. He's gone. He's gone. There he goes. From Poughkeepsie, <laughs> New York. Uh, and, of course, uh, Antonio Garza uh, down there, the WrestlingRevolution.com. Wait, let me get your image up. There you go. Show it off. Show it off. Who are you? And, of course, Eamon Payton down in San Antonio, Texas, the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling, InspireProWrestling.com. He looks like he's ready for a nap. Uh, Matt Collins <laughs> at Mainstream <laughs> Matt, <laughs> writing the articles over at WrestlingMamShow.com and IndieWrestling.us. And, of course, what do we call him again? El Chris. That's what I was going with. <laughs> El Ijo Del Cueto. Yeah. El Ijo Del Cueto. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, good luck on, on season two of Lucha Underground. Everybody here, of course, is looking forward to it. And uh... I'll tell my dad you guys said hi. <laughs> <laughs> you tell him he's welcome on the show anytime he wants. <laughs> okay, I will. I will let him know. There you go. Do we need to start a Lucha uh, a Mayhem show? Can that happen? Uh, <laughs> like, we'll cover Lucha Underground and Mexican wrestling. Because I had so much fun. I, I don't know if you know, we did a Mexican wrestling special. I, I watched it. Oh, like, did you? Oh, it, it was <laughs> yeah. a lot of fun. It's so weird. It's just so weird. <laughs> <laughs> Watching what we do. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, don't you don't you have like good stuff to watch, like your own thing compared to us? But you know, I, like, that's yeah, I, you know, it's only so many times you can watch that over and over and over and over again. So for me, yeah, man, I like I like to hear what you guys say. Man, good, uh, good. Uh, you didn't entertaining and fun for me. You didn't watch the episode where I drank, did you? <laughs> no, but that sounds like a good episode. <laughs> in, in, um, if you want to go on our Facebook page, I just watched it last week. Our five year anniversary show. That was a trip. The five year. <laughs> that I, was the thing we did. Yeah, that was a trip. It was it was live. We had wrestlers in there. Um, there may have been uh, exposed genitalia. We're not oh, really gosh. sure. Yeah, it, it was it was a trip. It was Serious. it was interesting. There was, there was a lot of stuff happening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oof. There's a reason we don't do too many live spots. Uh, yeah. Um, notice we didn't go back to that location. Um, anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, and hopefully we'll be able to come back to looking for a group. I don't think we damaged anything. And we only had one pro wrestler there, so I think that probably helped too. Uh, but anyways. If, if we win any awards uh, in the awards, just send them to the temple and, and uh, we'll, we'll display them in the office. <laughs> there you uh, you guys do an award show? Yes. So, yes. yes. I, don't I, don't think there any, I don't think there are any physical awards. But if, if people want to make acceptance speeches, we will let you know. Yeah, if Dario Cueto wins Best Evil Promoter of the Year, then please let us know. We'll, we'll make sure he, he lets you, sends you a response. And I do Dario. believe. <laughs> Fantastic. I do, <laughs> and I do believe, spoiler, I think Lucha Underground did come at least once in the uh, in the main uh, nominee uh, uh, discussion. So, uh, so yeah, you're, you're, it's in the running. We it's, have a chance. There, there's, there's a chance. chance. <laughs> there's a chance. And knowing this, uh, knowing, right. knowing the people around this show, yeah, I think you got a pretty good chance. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's going to look like a midweek war who won uh, situation. So, thank you so much. I, if somebody, if somebody listened to this whole thing, got this far, and still has not watched Lucha Underground, where the hell do they need to go? And what should they go look at first? Um, gosh, start from the beginning if you can. I know there's all sorts of ways to find it, but it should be available sooner and easier um, in, yeah, hopefully a few days. There you go. Excellent. Keep an ear Excellent. out for that. Just so they search Lucha Underground and DVD, whatever. And we'll see yeah. what happens. Steal it, do whatever. You know, what happens. <laughs> <laughs> okay, HBO. Thanks for that. 
Okay. Okay, Game of Thrones. Why cheat and steal to get Lucha Underground? That is the Guerrero way. So, yeah, sometimes you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do. Oh, so great. Thank you so much, and thank you everybody for joining us at uh, the late edition Wrestling Mayhem Show here live at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We'll see you guys next week in some shape or form. Mayhem out. Wait, just wait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.